Then you're holding him incommunicado. As a witness for the state, he'll have a detective at his side night and day. But I'm his attorney. I have a right to know where. Where is a police matter until such time as a grand jury is impaneled. Do I get to see my wife? No. You call that a deal? Ow, ow. You can always get to have her visit you in prison. Would you prefer that? Yeah. Right. Detective Ward is here. It's all set. It's fixed. Detective Ward? Got a call waiting outside. Detective Ward, Al Cowan, Mr. Gregory, his attorney. You ready, Mr. Cowan? Make sure they feed you well, Al. Yeah. That DA made himself a deal, huh? You know what I figure? I figure I'm in pretty good hands. Al Deferia, a non-stop talker. Yep. I guess we made ourselves a pretty good deal. Yeah, some deal. Two days in a hotel room with this canary. Say, you're not very sociable, are you, pal? <laughs> hey, blow well, we <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Hey, come here. Hey, right follow me. What are you? He's dead. Joe, take off, will you? You better make it good, Counselor. I was only trying to help, Benny. Help? By tying me in with a murder rap, that kind of help I don't need. Look, you were the one who was worried about a new grand jury investigation. They're talking about policy, Counselor. Gambling. Now, that's no good, but it's better than murder. Precisely. That's what I'm trying to explain. And I'm waiting. I mean, I'm fascinated. Look, you expressed deep anxiety over Al the Furrier getting picked up and then making a deal to talk to the grand jury. Naturally, as your attorney, I had to do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. You did something about it, all right. You got him killed. Now, right away, every cop in town has the same cute idea. Benny. It was an accident. What was that jerk doing, anyway, walking away like that? Well, I knew he'd never have the nerve to get away on his own, so I told him I'd fixed it with the police. I had a couple of men following him. As soon as he stepped out of the car, they were to pick him up and bring him to me. What were you going to do with that tough guy? Simply make him a better offer than the district attorney had. Plane tickets and passports for him and his wife, and a nice, cozy little bank account in Portugal. So what happened? So you made a corpse out of their chief witness. 
Now, Al, the furry is out of the way, and I come up smelling like a heron. Benny, it was a good idea, believe me, if it hadn't been for that cab. Cab? What do I care about any cab? Well, listen, Gregory, there's going to be a lot of noise about this, a lot of pressure. So you take the pressure off me, huh? Mind you, it's not going to be easy. You'll find a way. Alfred Cowan was the victim of foul play. You're accusing the police of inadequate protection. That's putting it mildly. Did Cowan make a deal with the DA? I believe he did. What? Well, well, Alfred Cowan was getting along in years. Perhaps he had some second thoughts about his past. Well, about his appearance before the grand jury, was it going to be voluntary? He would have told that jury everything he knew. And that includes the names of certain police officers to whom he transmitted certain bribes. Are you suggesting collusion between the police and the underworld? Well, let me spell it out for you. I'm saying that Detective Ward had a reason for wanting my client dead. You're libeling a good man, Greg. Good to whom, Lieutenant? I hope you have proof. Oh, there's proof, all right. The cab struck Callan at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The trip sheet shows one job at 7.30 in the morning. What do you call that, hacking? Well, I... I work that way. What way? Well, I put down my icebreaker, my first job, and then I wait until I book in, and then I fill in my sheet. When did you first meet Al Cowan? I told you. I never met him. Did you ever talk to Detective Ward? Oh, I don't know any Detective Ward. Well, like I said, we were held up in traffic. He looked at me, winked, opened the door, and out he went. He winked? That's right. I grabbed for him, and he knocked my hand away. Your driver didn't mention anything about you grabbing at Cowan. Well, how could he, Chief? It was all happening behind him. <coughs> Do you like to take over this inquiry, Mike? Sorry. The point is that the driver was negotiating traffic all through this incident. Now, everything that the driver said corroborating waters open a question. I'm due upstairs in 30 minutes, and I better have a coherent line of investigation to give the commissioner, or there's going to be hell to pay. Did you ever meet Cowan before you would detail the garden? Well? Yes, sir. When? Well, we live in the same neighborhood where his first store is located. Were you ever inside the shop? Yes, to look around. How often? Once. My wife and I used to play a game about buying a coat in the window. Did you ever buy your wife a fur coat? No. Does your wife own a fur coat? No. Are you sure? Yes, sir, I'm sure. Jeff, read this. That's a receipt made out to Mrs. Jeff Ward. One main coat, value $4,000, in storage, Lennox First Shop, 125th Street and Broadway. Signed receipt. That puts the nail in. Hey, what is this? My wife doesn't have a fur coat. Lieutenant, this has got to be a fake. It's signed by Alfred Cowan, proprietor of the shop in question. Lieutenant, that's got to be a phony. You're giving credence to the word of a lawyer who's been up on disbarment proceeding three times in the last nine years? That signature is dated three months ago, and it's authentic. He's a self-confessed bag man for the whole West Side Syndicate. Am I being charged with complicity in Cowan's death? What I'm trying to do is get enough information so that you won't be charged. <coughs> does your wife work? She does volunteer work for an anti-poverty program, yes. Does she have a private income? No. Could she have bought a coat without you having any knowledge of it? No. Could uh, somebody have given her a coat? Now, wait a minute. I don't have to sit here and listen to that. All right. Lieutenant, the PCCIU Borough Command and the District Attorney are conducting investigations into this thing. Now, pending results, I'm taking this man off the chart and assigning him to my office. Lieutenant, a cab driver keeps coming up with stories that cancel each other out, hiding something. You think Jeff would risk his career for a lousy fur coat? Yeah. You ever been offered a bribe, John? Yes. And? I won't lie, I was tempted. What makes you think Jeff's so different? Wait a minute, you think he did it? No, I don't think he did it. But I've been wrong before and I can be wrong again. Besides, what I think doesn't matter anyway. If we can't prove he didn't do it, he's gonna have to take the fall. So am I, so are you, so are 25,000 other cops who never even heard of Jeff Ward. It's lousy, but that's the way it is. Sir. Yeah. Oh? Good. Good. 
All right, Walter, thank you. They just ran a check on your clock. Doesn't show a single pickup since your first fair. Doesn't show any free time. All it shows is a lot of dead mileage. All right, then, then the clock is all screwed up. So that was the hype bureau on the phone. They flat sealed that meter three days ago. It was in A1 condition. Oh, this, I, I don't know anything about any uh, flat seals or lousy meters or anything. Who paid you to do it? Well, well, nobody, no, nobody paid me to do anything. You waited around all day, and Cowan and Detective Ward came out. You followed the car, Cowan jumped out, and you ran him down. Well, it was an accident. I panicked and I ran. It's the truth. When'd you meet Gregory? Gregory? Who, who, who's Gregory? Who set this up? Gregory? For how much? This is Jeffrey Ward. Was this coat originally bought here? Yes, it's one of ours. Why? Okay. I'll have to take it with me. Oh, no, that's impossible. It doesn't... What? Nothing. I'm giving you a department receipt. We need the code as evidence. I guess that's legal, huh? Why don't you check it with Cowan's lawyer? Who has access to these files? Mrs. Uh, Cowan, who lives upstairs, the uh, accountant, uh, the other clerk who went out to lunch. What about the lawyer, Gregory? I don't know. Yes, you do. Uh, yes, I guess so. Thank you. You gotta believe me, Lieutenant. It's the truth. It's like I said. I worked the night mine. So I picked up this woman at show break and was outside the uh, Martin Beck Theater. And we got to talking. And when I got her home, she invited me up. I spent the night. Then I um, drove her around all day, you know, shopping and things like that. Listen, I, I, I know it was wrong, Lieutenant. I mean, the cab is due back in the garage at midnight. I swear, it's the truth. I was on my way back to the garage when I hit this guy, whatever his name is, uh, Cowan. The more he talks, the more trouble he gets in. Hey, look. <laughs> look. <laughs> you guys are trying to pin something on me that I don't know anything about. I hit him, but it was an accident. Why do you keep refusing a lawyer? I don't need a lawyer. <laughs> you still claim you don't know Detective Ward? That's the truth. I don't know him. Lieutenant. On this instant love affair, the name of this woman, Tina Rogers? There's no Tina Rogers living at the address he gave us. Well, maybe it's not her place. Maybe she gave me a phony name. <laughs> okay, honey, I'm coming. Oh, I thought it was my husband. Hello, Lieutenant. Mrs. Ward, may we come in for a minute? Of course. You know, Detective, of course, so. Hello, John. Hi. I take it Jeff's not here. He's down at the supermarket. Should be back in a minute. Anything I can do to help? Yes, there is. Of course, it's all off the record, huh? Gotcha. Ah, so this is the wicked old coat. Have you seen it before? Nope. Wish I had. Sure is fine. I guess you can incriminate Jeff on his fit alone. No, Lieutenant. It's not mine. I didn't buy it. It wasn't given to me. I have no receipt for it and no canceled check. There are no anonymous donors. I never bought anything in my life at the Lennox Fur Shop. It's tearing Jeff apart from this whole thing. Take that thing off. Honey, I was only Take trying... Take it off. Take it easy, Jeff. Why? Lieutenant, unless you have a warrant, you'd better leave. Jeff. If you want to talk to these people, baby, you do it outside, not in here. You're not holding your case, Jeffrey. What case? Haven't you heard? I don't have a case. Jeff. I'm all right. Listen. Jeff, this is my house, too. Yeah, they're trying to bring it down on your head. Do you believe that? Oh, come on, honey, open your eyes. My eyes are open, and they see you. What is it, Jeff? Aren't they bending over backwards? Now, what's that supposed to mean, huh? It means maybe they're not playing your little game. What little game? It's their game, and they're making the rules. It's your game, too, and your rules. 
What is this? The intruder in the dust bit? What part are you playing tonight? Madam Dignity trying to cool the local ruckus? Baby, these guys need business. I'm fighting a rear guard action. I'm not investigating them. They're investigating me. Okay. I want to find out how old the signature on that receipt is. How old is it supposed to be? Three months. It'll take some work, depending on the ink and how long it'll take to oxidize. We'll see what you can do, huh? Sure thing. Want me to stick around? No, go over to identification. Dig up everything you can on Gregory. I want to know his connection with the Harlem Crime Syndicate. His tie-ins with Benny Benjamin. Everything. He smokes, drinks, the works. When you finish, meet me over at the Sunset Funeral Home. Sunset Funeral Home? Yeah. You gotta pay our respects to Al Cowan. Invited you, Mr. Gregory. Lieutenant Haynes wants to see you. Haynes. All right, I'll call him now. It's urgent. Look, this is all in rather poor taste. Don't you know where you are? <laughs> Lieutenant, what is this? You've got a lot of gall coming here. Believe me, Gregory, I'm not happy to be here myself. The commissioner wants to see you downtown right away. It'll have to wait. He's holding a press conference in 15 minutes. He's going to make a final statement on the Jeff Ward case. Well, I'll uh, have to explain my leaving. Well, there isn't time. The DA will be there, too. need this coat and the receipt. I'm beginning not to like this, Lieutenant. I haven't liked it all along, Mr. Gregory. I hope you have a search warrant for these premises. That's for openers. Anything else? The Commissioner didn't want to see me, did he? There is no press conference. No, there is no press conference. Anything else? It's a pretty clumsy trick, Lieutenant. Admit it. Anything else? How'd you get the keys? I bullied the clerk. What's this all about? Routine. I want to ask a few questions. You made some charges. I'm investigating. Why here? Scene of the crime, Mr. Gregory. Anything else? Get this over with. Would you like to call your lawyer? Very funny. Maybe you'd like to call Benny. I have certain constitutional rights, Lieutenant. You're free to go. You forced me in here. You got in the car. We took a ride. It was all free and clear, remember? This is as dirty a piece of business as finding Ward with this coat. for the meditation scene. I'll sit and you'll squirm. Sit down, Gregory. This is all a waste of time. No hurry. 
Hello? Girardi, yeah, go ahead. Sorry I can't help you, Lieutenant. I couldn't get a good enough reading on that ink to tell one way or another. I'll get it, but it's going to take more time. Good. All right, fine. That was a police lab. They can scientifically demonstrate that the signature on that fur receipt is less than two days old. That's a lie. No, it's not. And you know it's not. stuff. Right on time. I demand protection. What for? They think I'm talking. Now we can wing it, Gregory. Goodbye, Mr. Gregory. Wait! I'm leaving, Gregory. You're free to go. Please, don't leave. Answer your questions. Gary? But I want everything. From the beginning. The way you told Cowan Ward was fixed. The phony receipt, the mint coat, everything. You've got to protect me. We'll protect you. I'm going to see personally that you go before the grand jury alive and well. All right. My name is not Tina Rogers. It's Angela. She wasn't a passenger. We just happened to know each other for a couple of years. Why'd you keep coming up with those phony stories? I just didn't want her to find out. I'm a, I'm a married man, officer. A couple of nights a week, I take the cab out, and I spend my time with Angela. My wife's a very good woman, so I just didn't want her to find out. I mean, I, I, I hit the man, and I just ran. Lieutenant? We're finding it a straight story, boss. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Ready to go back to work? Take him inside and book him. Get him right. Let's go. Hey, I'm sorry about the other day. Forget it. But Ethel's happy. <laughs> you kidding? She won't be happy until she gets herself a fur coat. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs>